Hello Mini Painting Visionaries, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dave. Uh, today we're going to be painting the Cliff Breaker Cyclops from Cool Mini or Not's Massive Darkness. Uh, it's a really nice mini with a lot of neat details. Uh, we're also going to be looking at a few new painting techniques such as dry brushing. Uh, so I'm excited to bring the video to you, so uh, let's get to it. Here you can see our Cliffbreaker Cyclops, unpainted and unprimed. It's a great mini with lots of interesting details and it was really fun to paint. However, you can see some obvious gaps under the elbows to where the forearms meet the biceps. If left, these gaps will be quite noticeable after painting, so we are going to fill them with a product called Green Stuff. These yellow and blue bars are putties that when mixed form an epoxy putty called green stuff. I tend to use a very small amount of each as you can see by the small slivers I cut off with a hobby knife. To begin, roll the yellow sliver into a thin snake, then do the same with the blue. Once you have the two pieces, mix them together. I find spiraling them around each other and then folding them up, rolling the lump around, eventually it turns into a ball of green stuff. It is important to have water nearby as you will want to keep your fingers wet to avoid the putty sticking to them and it will help make the green stuff more malleable. Here, I'm ripping off a small piece and applying it to the gap under the elbow of the first arm. Using some water, I'm smearing the green stuff into the gap, massaging it in, or using my nail to push it in to seal the crack. Oh, look at that manual dexterity. Let's see that again in slow motion. Very nice. At this point, you can use your finger or tools to strip away the green stuff you don't need while trying to make a smooth surface where the hole or gap used to be. Using the sculpting tool or your fingertips, keep adding a bit of water and smoothing out the green stuff to blend in with the model until you get the end result you're looking for. To prime the Cyclops, I'm using the Army Painter War Paints Brush On Gray Primer. I'm applying it with a cheap, wide brush to achieve coverage over the entire model in an even layer. Working my way down from the massive boulder, area by area, coating the plastic in the primer to give it an adhesive layer for the base coat to stick to. I'm starting the base coat by painting all of the flesh areas with Cadian Flesh Tone thinned down with a roughly 1 to 1 ratio with water. Cadian Flesh Tone is a decent representation of tanned flesh fitting for this beast as I imagine him spending his days roaming the countryside looking for victims to smash with his giant boulder. It's a big model with a lot of exposed skin so I'm continuing to use a large cheap brush without much concern for neatness as we will be painting over every other part of the mini later. For the boulder and other stone elements of the model, I'm using Mechanicus Standard Grey. Initially, I'm sticking with my larger brush for the large boulder in his hands, but then switching to a medium layer brush for the areas between his fingers and along the hands. I'm also using this smaller brush for the stones at his hip, as well as for what appears to be a stone donut armor piece on his chest. Next, I'm using a medium base brush to paint his horns with Yushabdi bone. This color also works nicely for the bone handle of his nasty looking hooked stone blade. I switch to a medium layer brush for the narrower areas of the handle and for the bony protrusions on his head and chin. The teeth are also being painted in this yellowish color, 
and so are all the fingernails and toenails. You could say the Cyclops has an eye for the finer things in life, and so all the precious metal bits adorning his torso are being painted in Retributor Gold with a medium layer brush. The mesh adornments and the rings hanging from his loincloth are also getting a base coat of Retributor Gold. All of the straps on his chest piece are being painted with Rhinox hide using a medium layer brush. I'm also using this dark brown color for the straps holding the rocks at his hip as well as those attaching his blade to his waist. I'm also giving the skull that is tied to his weapon a base coat of Rhinox hide. I'm using Caliban Green to start a jade treatment to the more shaped and polished square stone pieces attached to his harness and to his weapon. You could do these in grey similar to the other stone, but I'm giving them a special treatment that will become clearer later in the video. For his hair, I'm using Mornfang Brown which has a warm reddish tone to it. Later in the video, I extend his hairline down to a stubborn mold line that was difficult to remove, so I just used it to my advantage. The leathery hide on his back is being painted with XV88 as a base for a worn, dirty look. It's a large surface, so I'm using a medium base brush. I also use this color for the leather wrapping that forms the grip on his large stone blade. Steel Legion Drab is a staple color for my plain monster cloth wraps and loincloths. Our Cyclops doesn't want to draw attention away from his bling, so I'm keeping the leg armor and loincloth conservative with this olive brown. I wanted the weapon to be different from the rest of the stone, so Vallejo Black will be the base color for a sharpened obsidian blade. To finish off the base coat, I'm using Lead Belcher to cover all the metal plates, spikes, and other bits in a thin layer of dark metal. The first wash that I'm using is Agrax Earthshade. I'm applying it with a medium shade brush over the hair as well as the horns and any other bony protrusions. This wash is also great for the straps as well as the leather hide armor on his back. The leather wraps on his weapon will look dirty and well worn with this wash and all the gold pieces will have a slightly tarnished look in their recesses after this is applied. It should also be applied on the loincloth and leg wrap to make them appear dirty and well worn. Next, I'm using Reichlin Flesh Shade to provide depth to all areas of the Cyclops' skin. It's okay to be messy in this step if you're pressed for time, but the messier you are here, the longer it will take for you to clean up your highlights later in the process. Although it will take more time, you could apply the wash and a thin brush directly into the recesses to avoid a lengthy cleanup later. A forewarning, the skin will look very messy from this point on in the video until we get to the skin highlights, but trust the process, it'll be fine. Dry brushing can be a very quick way to create edge highlights or to create a dusty look on your minis. I'm starting my dry brushing by using a large dry brush to grab a small amount of Celestra Grey straight from the paint pot. 
Then you can see I'm brushing about 95% of the paint off onto a paper towel until there is almost no liquid pigment left on the brush. Then you very lightly fan the tip of the brush along the surface of the model so the small amount of pigment left on the brush sticks only to the high points and edges of the mini. It is better to have too little paint on the brush, forcing you to do multiple light passes to establish the color variation as opposed to too much paint with the brush still wet, uh, which will result in smearing. If the brush is wet at all, then you aren't dry brushing, are you? I switch to a small dry brush for the smaller stones and for the areas that are close to those painted with a different color. Next, I'm repeating the same dry brushing technique with an even lighter gray called Ultuan Gray. This will be uh, an even lighter dry brush treatment aimed at the areas most likely to catch some light. Again, I'm switching to the small brush for the smaller rocks and the rock donut. Back to washes, I'm using Nuln Oil with a large shade brush to cover the boulder we just dry brushed. This will cover it with a dark filter and get into the recesses to create depth. I'm switching to a medium shade brush to cover the smaller rocks in the same way. I know what you're thinking. Dave, why are you covering up our nice dry brushing we just finished? Well, stop whining, you'll see. I think my process for making rocks looks realistic and kind of, well, rocks. Now we will apply a very light dry brush of Althuan Grey again to really make those edges and raised areas pop. Next, I'll be using Mechanicus Standard Gray to dry brush the blade to look like obsidian. But I'll pause here for a moment and show a couple of pictures of obsidian blades so you can see the look I'm striving for. You can see the stone is black, but the high points appear gray and almost white in some areas and are quite shiny. Here it has a bluish tint and that's the look we will emulate. So, small dry brush, 95% of the paint rubbed into the paper towel, only dry pigment on the brush, I'm lightly fanning the edges of the stone and all the raised ridges along the length of the blade. To really make the edges pop, I'm doing an even lighter dry brush with Celestra Gray aimed at the edges and the cutting edge of the blade. With a medium shade brush, I'm applying Nuln Oil to the blade to tone down the dry brushing and make it look less dusty. We will finish the blade in the next step of the video, Highlights. Starting off the highlights, I'm using Thin Down Retributor Armor with a medium layer brush on all the gold bits. I'm avoiding the recesses and focusing the paint in the upper 75% of each area most likely to reflect light. To finish off the bling, I'm using Auric Armor Gold on the upper half and edges of each gold element to make them look a bit shinier. Next, with a small dry brush, I'm fanning the edges with Fenrisian Grey, which has a bluish hue, but is still a nice light grey. To make the blade look smooth, I'm using Vallejo Black with a medium layer brush on all the faces of the blade other than the areas on the cutting edge. To finish off the blade, I'm using a small layer brush to highlight the cutting edge as well as the ridges and imperfections running up the blade.
I'm also applying this as an edge highlight with the side of my brush to the edges of the obsidian stone. The jade areas got messed up throughout the process, so I'm reapplying Caliban Green with a small layer brush to any areas that need a touch up. To create the jade effect, I'm applying an edge highlight of Cabalite Green to all the green polished stone with a small layer brush. You can also dab this color or paint tiny streaks on the side of the stone to look like striations of lighter stone running through the green base coat. Next, I'm applying a wash, Coelia Green Shade, with a medium shade brush to smooth out the two greens. The casual observer will never see this, but you'll know it's there, you little perfectionist you. I'm completing the jade treatment with a final edge highlight on all the edges with Cyberite Green, which is quite a bright highlight. To make the metal bits pop, I'm applying a highlight of the original lead belcher on the raised areas and upper 50% of the metal parts, again avoiding the recesses. To highlight the loin cloth and leg wrap, I'm using thin down steel legion drab to touch up any raised areas or those most likely to reflect the light. I'm using Rakarth Flesh to cover the skull that is strapped to the obsidian blade. And then covering it with Agrax Earthshade to give depth by darkening the recesses such as the eye sockets. Using a small layer brush and some thinned down Yushabti bone, I'm highlighting the bone on the blade handle as well as all the bony protrusions on his face and head. The eye will also get a coat of this, but I'm focusing on the upper portion of the eyeball. I'm also hitting the teeth and nails to make them stand out a bit from the fleshy color surrounding them. I'm also highlighting the upper portion of the horns as well as the edge of the broken one. As an edge highlight and for the highest points on all the light brown material, I'm using Talern Sand. I'm also painting the edges of some of the details on the cloth material. To highlight the hair, I'm dry brushing Scrag Brown lightly over the raised areas of the hair to make the highest ridges a lighter, redder brown. I also used a small layer brush for the areas that were tricky to reach with the dry brush. Here, I'm just cleaning up the straps with the original Rhinox hide in areas where they may have been altered by all the dry brushing we've done. I've chosen Scrag Brown for the edge highlight on all the straps. I think it meshes well with the dark brown and looks like the frayed edge of a dark brown leather. Okay, we couldn't put it off any longer. Time to tidy up the skin. I'm repainting the upper 75% of each area of skin with the original Cadian flesh tone.
Take care to clean up any stains left by the flesh shade and do your best to ensure the highest areas of the muscles and limbs have a smooth coat with good opacity. You may have to go over areas multiple times if your paint is thin. As a final highlight to the skin, I'm using a 1 to 1 ratio of Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh, which is then thinned down to cover all the parts of the body that would be hit by the light from the direction of your implied light source. I focused on the top third of each of these areas to make sure there was a smooth gradient to this lighter tone. Up close, the contrast between the recesses and high points can be quite jarring, but at a gameplay distance from eye to table, it creates a nice effect. I couldn't find an image for the Sons of Horus green I'm using for the iris, so here it is. To paint the small iris, use any brush with a very small tip, steady your hands, hold your breath, and carefully dot on your eye. What a handsome fella. Here I'm using Baneblade Brown as an edge highlight to all the lighter leather areas such as the blade grip and the back armor. I'm also using it to apply a highlight to the highest part of the grip where you guessed it, the light would reflect. Now I'm using an older brush to apply Vallejo's polyurethane gloss varnish to the blade to give it a glassy look. To the gold to make it look shiny. To the jade to make it look polished. And to the eye to make it look moist. And to the metal to also give it a shine. This mini is a bit top heavy, so I'm adding some rocks to the base to provide stability. For this, I'm using pebbles that I bought in bulk from the dollar store and painting them almost the same way we painted the stone on the mini. Mechanicus Standard Grey Base Coat, Nuln Oil Wash, Celestra Grey Dry Brush, Finally, a very light Ulthuan Grey dry brush. Before we glue the rocks on and block access under the mini, I'm applying a healthy layer of Vallejo's European Thick Mud Acrylic Texture Paint to simulate a muddy vegetation. I'm spreading it around the center of the base to ensure I cover the area under the figure. Next, I'm taking the rocks we just painted and using super glue, and I'm securing them to the base in the desired position by pressing firmly for about 10 to 15 seconds and then letting them dry for a few minutes. I'm then applying the European mud texture around the rest of the base, covering all of the surface area and getting in between the rocks and the cyclops feet. As an extra touch, I'm gluing some Army Painter Swamp Tufts of varying sizes onto the base in areas that seem fitting or to cover up mistakes, if I ever made any that is. They are easy to apply using a pair of tweezers and some crazy glue and then pressing them into the mud to secure them. Here, I'm using a utility knife to scrape off any dried bits of the European mud texture that may have leaked over the edge of the base. This will create a nice smooth surface for our two coats of Mornfang Brown to finish the base. And finally, here's our completed Cliff Breaker Cyclops from Cool Mini or Not's Massive Darkness. I hope you enjoyed my third video and the first in the Massive Darkness series. Thanks for watching, everyone.